Welcome all you travelers. Kathy and I recently went to Andersonville, Georgia. That's a historic place from the Civil War. Um, Camp Sumter was nearby. Uh, the soldiers that were prisoners there came in to the train station, train depot. Uh, so we went uh, because they have a walking tour of, of the town. And that's what you see in this video. So come along with us uh, on the walking tour. Enjoy the video. We want to thank all you who have already subscribed to our channel. We appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed yet, we ask you to do so. Uh, we would appreciate that if you're so inclined. Give us a thumbs up. That uh, encourages uh, YouTube to promote our channel. It helps our channel. Uh, leave us a comment down in the comment section. Share this video with somebody you know that likes uh, videos about historical places, travel videos. And uh, you just have a very, very blessed day. What is now the depot in City Hall was the site of a quartermaster commissary storehouse. It was built to house rations for the prisoners at Camp Sumter. Because of the Union blockade and of the proximity of Union armies, there was never enough food for the approximately 45,000 prisoners that detrained from here and took the 800 paces to get to the prison camp. Across the railroad track is the site of the Civil War Depot. The building you see in this photo was built in the early 1900s and was moved to this spot from Mock, Georgia in 1974. By 1880, when Andersonville was incorporated, it had a permanent population of 304. This building was already being used as a store, and later it was used for council meetings and other community affairs.
this building was built around 1860. It housed a store and a tavern. It was built by Benjamin Dykes. He owned large tracts of land, a cotton gin, and stables. He also owned the land on which the Confederate prison was built. It is now the post office, and upon request, visitors can have their packages, postcards, letters, postal time stamped with an Andersonville postmark. The Drummer Boy Museum building was built by the Holloway Brothers in the early 1920s. The downstairs was a general store with the best steaks in town. They used the upstairs as a place to roll cigars and later it was used as a dance hall. The Works Monument stands in the center of Church Street. It was erected in 1909 by the Georgia Division of the United Daughters of the Confederacy. Works served as the camp commander for most of the 14 months it was open. The story of Captain Works is told on the four sides of the monument.
This is the side of a building that housed two offices. One was for Brigadier General John H. Winder, who was Provost Marshal of Richmond from 1862 to 1864 and Commissary General of Confederate Prisons from 1864 to 1865. He was directly responsible for the welfare of the prisoners at Camp Sumter. If he had not died before the end of the war, most likely he would have stood trial along with Captain Wirtz. The other office belonged to Captain Wirtz, even though his headquarters was near the Star Fort just outside the stockade at Fort Sumter. This building was built and operated by Johnny Johnson on this site in the late 1850s and later by his son Cliff. Located on seven acres behind the post office is a recreated Pioneer Farm. It contains a 130-year-old log cabin donated by the McClendon family and Henderson Justice. There's also some log buildings and a blacksmith shop funded by Master Blacksmith J. Rickert. There's an old jail and a cane mill and a syrup kettle. There's also an operating grist mill.
I'm going this way, honey. This building was the Andersonville Baptist Church. It was built in 1843 on Lightwood Creek, about five miles from Andersonville. It was moved to this spot in 1890. In 2010, the last remaining member donated the building to the Andersonville Guild, which re uh, renovated it and now rents it out for events. This bandstand was located at the Manoa Springs Resort, located near Lanier, Georgia, and moved here to this spot in the late 1970s. This log church was built in 1927 of cypress logs and native fieldstone. It was designed by renowned architect Ralph Adams Cram, who also designed the Calvary Episcopal Church in Americas. It was erected a few miles east of, Amer of Andersonville and donated to the city of Andersonville in the 1970s by the Pennington family.
This is the original home of the Dykes family. Later it was used as a schoolhouse. Then it reverted back to a, a dwelling, but now it's used as a retail shop. And I remember at one time it was a cafe, a restaurant.
There has been a Methodist church in Andersonville since the Civil War days. This building was constructed in 1947. In 1950, W.T. Brown of Washington, New Jersey, stopped here to worship. He was so impressed by the welcoming and friendly nature of the people that at his death, he left his entire estate to this church.